Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Jenna's Path. So, the last place we left off, where was it? Ah, yes, we were browsing Carl's search history. And it's a little, it's a little, uh, little naughty, a little odd. But we came across some old pictures of ourselves back in the day. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoy the video. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up. All right, let's do it. I frowned reactively, reaching up and touching the scruff at the end of my chin. It was kind of weird, but now I'm used to seeing it. I frowned deeper. TJ blinks, giving me an apologetic look. I tried to refocus the conversation. <sighs> Carl was missing. He is. Why are you looking at old pictures? These were the files he was looking at yesterday. And we checked his browser history. His online activity stopped just before midnight and didn't ever resume. Anything unusual there? I think he was looking to buy a Fuda? Jenna stands there, staring at TJ with a deadpan expression. After about five seconds, she looks at me expectantly. He means a futon. But you said... Nope, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, well, I'll be sure to let the sheriff know when she gets here. Flynn steps into the, roo into the room besides Jenna. Usually the Gila has a bit of a case of resting bitch face, but right now he looks downright sour. All right, let's figure out who's going to look where. Wolf Boy has made the decision to go check the roads Elizabeth through Danica. Chase, you've got Margaret Lane through Tetanus Alley. T tetanus Alley? Fucking really? <laughs> through Tetanus Alley, Jasmine Street. I'm giving you more since you've got a car. I'll take Gretchen Way through the beginning part of Route 65 in my truck. TJ, you like hiking. We need you to check around the hills and old nature trails around here, all the way down to the lake. TJ stiffens, and the feeling of the room seems to cool drastically. Only if you're comfortable doing that, okay? We just want to be thorough. I'm fine. I'll be fine. I just want Carl to be okay. Jenna nods, offering TJ a reassuring smile. Just text me while you're out. I'll most likely be free since I'll be keeping a watch here at the house. TJ smiles back sheepishly. Okay. Before you all scat off to your respective places, I found some weird shit in the basement. Flynn holds up his fingers, there being some white, chalky substance upon them. At the entrance to the crawl space, there was a bunch of hoof prints, dents in the wall, and plaster everywhere. Like Carl was headbutting the damn thing. There's nothing I can see in there, though. My theory is that Jeremy gave him bad weed, laced with some shit, and now Carl's on a real bad trip. Which is why I need you to talk to Jeremy when you get to Jasmine, Chase. He looks sidelong toward Jenna. Jasmine Street, I mean. I feel a chill crawl up my spine. Jeremy and especially his friends made my life hell during most of my childhood, especially after the lake incident. All of them were native inhabitants of Jasmine Street. If it wasn't for Leo stepping in, things would have been even worse. You can text me too, Chase. She seems to have read the look on my face. I swallow and try to look casual. Okay. Flynn rolls his eyes so hard I can't see his pupils for a moment. Pausing, I remember something. I saw Leo get into an argument with Duke outside the house earlier. Duke kept pointing at it and was saying something to him. Whatever Duke said, it was enough for Leo to push him to the ground and drive off. Knowing Leo's minimum threshold for violent turns, probably hello. Flynn seems to soften a bit at the comment, looking sidelong to hide his smirk before returning to his more hardened expression. But in seriousness, that is concerning. I'll also relay that as this information to Sheriff Malka when she gets here. I'll text Leo and try to figure out what he wanted. Good plan. Flynn immediately heads out without another word. TJ hesitates a little, fidgeting with something on the computer, but he gets up and leaves as well. I'm about to fall asleep, but Jenna stops me, her paw on my shoulder. Hey, if Jeremy asks about me, you don't need to lie and say I'm not here or anything, okay? Oh yeah, I understand. She lowers her paw, recrossing her arms over her chest. We'll talk later, yeah? Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm lingering to the point of awkwardness now. Good luck. You too. With a clearing of my throat, I shuffle my way out. Hmm. Ooh, this is new. I take the bend out of Mary Drive, trying to squint through dust kicked up by the vehicle past the sagebrush ahead. Carl isn't exactly small or stealthy, so if he's around here, I should be able to see him. 
The more I drive, the more I start to notice how little maintenance the dirt roads receive out here. My tires kick up topsoil and gravel, and divots mar the surface and jolt me in my seat. Unlike Flynn's truck or Leo's van, my little clunker isn't meant for these sort of roads. I can practically feel my maintenance bill growing. As I approach the turn off Jasmine Street, I pull over to the side of the road. I reach back into my shorts and take my wallet, placing it in the glove box and locking it, just in case. Sick me out of the vehicle, a cool, a cool sweat begins to form along my neck, and I have to remind myself that I'm 21. We're all adults. I can drink. I have a car. I live by myself. And Carl is in trouble. As I walk through the clearing of dry brush, dry bush, I'm reminded of the last time I was here. I had a fight with my parents. I think it was over my grades or Leo or something. Eventually, I had enough of being yelled at and took off for a more generic, for more generic, and took off for a generic teenage angst walk. My MP3 player was with me at the time, so I had to put my earbuds in and had the emo core cranked up. Hours passed, and it was like I wasn't even awake, just meandering through the desert, bleary-eyed and directionless. I must have ended up on Jasmine because the abandoned school was nearby. I remember stopping to kick a rubber tire or something, and before I could, an arm appeared. It was furless. Sort of pinkish and incredibly long. It just sort of showed up in the corner of my vision, stretching out in front of me like someone was trying to hug me from behind. The music on my MP3 player had stopped, and there was a complete absence of sound besides a ringing in my ears. For some reason, I still don't understand. I didn't move. Maybe I was too scared. I did speak, but all I could say was, Hey. And then someone hit me over the back of the head and called me a cocksucker. They tried to take my MP3 player too, but I was clutching it so tightly at that point that they couldn't get me to release it, no matter how many times they hit me in the head. I ended up telling Leo about it later, and he basically forbade me from ever going near Jasmine Street again. He kept asking who did it. I told him I didn't know, but Leo thought, it, thought I was just trying to keep him from harm. He went on a big speech about how, where he comes from, if somebody did this shit to a man's significant other, they'd be fucking dead. I was tired and my head hurt. So I asked him how well this, that philosophy was working out for everyone in his home country. That just made him even angrier, and he kept going on about how he, about he's supposed to be the protector of us all. Hell, he even name-dropped Sydney to help prove his point. Someone he almost never brings up because it kills the good mood. Hmm, that's new. I came to a stop at the edge of the clearing. The street sign on the corner at the base of the hill confirms my location. Jasmine Street also known as Tetanus Alley, if you ask Flynn. No wonder Jenna changed her name. I make a point to keep my tail from touching the ground, occasionally checking the path ahead for shattered glass. Looking through the shattered windows in the, of the abandoned manufactured homes and littered hilltops, I can't imagine Carl in a place like this. Approaching Jenna's old house, I take stock of how it aged. Poorly. It's stucco, unlike most of the other trailers about. But it hasn't seen a good coat of paint in at least a decade. The lawn is overgrown with weeds and old convenience store wrappers lay entangled with the grass. Even as little kids, we never played here. Jenna would always insist we go to Leo's or my house. Listening in and peering through the torn screen windows, I can see that no one is home. Moving on around the back, I hear some chatter behind the half-demolished home next door. Some familiar voices stand out instantly. I keep out of sight behind, this, behind the debris. No, no, it wasn't like that, Heather says, and says this in a babyish whine, practically a coo. There's a rasper speaking voice that I don't remember her having. You let up with him all damn day in that shed, and you're saying you didn't do that? No. He was really, really sweet. I mean, he had an accent and everything. What kind of accent? That voice I don't recognize. It's sort of gravelly, but... Artificial, like someone trying to make their voice sound deeper than it is. You know, the Hispanic ones. Is that still, you know, PC to say? Because my cousin was telling me off fears like for using that other word. <laughs> you call Josh a Heather. But I meant it in a good way, you know, like when I call you my night rat. You can call me whatever the fuck you want, Heather. Just don't be throwing that shit around when Jer when Jer is trying to sell. Chill, dude. You still bought it from me. How much? It's in the book. He might not next time, dude. Ever since you you got my back, you're so much more assertive. 
The unknown voice doesn't respond. Jeremy speaks up again. So what happened with Juan? We just talked, you know. He wants to be a baker. He said next time we meet, he'll bring me some guava, some guava campanchanas. Those are those apple turnover looking things, right? God, I'm hungry. Oh, that sounds so good, Jeremy. Why did you have to bring up apple turnovers? Well, uh, that's sort of what cappuccinos are. You brought them up, Heather. Jeremy laughs in his trademark bassy and abrupt titter. Are you gonna give Juan since your cherry pie next time you see him, too? What? Huh? I don't know how to cook. I don't even have a stove. Fuck me. The voice crones. It, it slangs for vagina. You know, a slice of cherry pie. I wouldn't put my junk into a vagina that looked like a slice of a cherry pie. Heh, <laughs> you're gross. What? He said it. You both are. <laughs> Heather says this with a snooty flare, though it's subverted by her voice's more dopey, childish undertone. I need to get out of this town. You haven't even been back that long. Are you upset about the dreams again? Yeah, the dreams and shit are getting worse, but it's other stuff too, okay? You just need to relax, dude. Smoke some. You got... Smoke some, you know? That's what works for me when I got them. I'm trying not to use up the stuff I'm trying to sell. I gotta save up, you know? Everyone around here seems to be losing their shit. More so than usual. Plus that fucking bear leaning around here all the time. Brian keeps pushing me to sell this cut, injectable stuff. Well, tell me what it is. Really? There's a pause in the conversation. Keith wants to say hi to his mom before work. What? Keith wants to say hi to his mom before work. Heather. Keith wants to say hi to his mom before work. What's wrong with her? Why are you saying that, Heather? An increasing sense of urgency takes hold in Jeremy's usual calm, lackadaisy tone. Keith! You mean Keith from... Heather begins to sob. Her crying is sputtering and wet. I can hear it from here. Oh, God! Heather, dude, what's wrong? She continues bawling, her whining cry increasingly shrill and choked. Oh my god! Heather! I can't deal with this right now! Mika, give her a joint! Mika, what? What? I'm not giving her any more of mine. She's probably pulling this shit just to get more. Dude, now! I've got some of mine in the mini storage out back. Just hurry, okay? Fuck! Okay, okay! Hearing footsteps, my heart lurches. I move back around to the other side of the structure, praying that my clumsy otter self is actually stealthy for once in my life. However, it isn't long before I see him around the same corner I just did. Oh. Okay, he's a... he's a bat. What in the goddamn shit? Mika's big eyes widen in alarm, the words catching his throat, higher pitched than his others. There's a pause, and having been caught, I haven't got a clue of what to say. Well, shit, it really is you. He mutters, his face taking a more stern expression. What? What the fuck are you doing here, Schizo? I'm jolted for a moment, that being something that I haven't been called in years. I swallow, crossing my arms and trying to look nonchalant. Looking for Jeremy? I thought you fucked off to college like the rest. I thought you disappeared back in 08. A quiet huff escapes the small bat. Well, I'm here now. Heather's, cry, Heather's crying can still be heard in the background, her banshee-like wails providing an odd ambience to this reunion. Why do you need to see Jeremy? I'm looking for Carl. An indiscernible expression takes hold upon Mika's face, intense with his gaze flicking to his surroundings. Risco ain't here? Why, is Leo with you? No. Suddenly, Jeremy approaches from around the corner. Oh, wow. Okay, that's what Jeremy looks like. Dude, what is take? What the hell? The stout phoenix turquoise eyes bulge. He's much more round than I remember him. Look like a mix of Jenna and Carl's body. Schizo's here? Oh, Jesus, where's the wolf? He says he's not here. Guys, I'm looking for Carl. Even the police are searching for him now. Mika tenses the hell up at that information. His standoffish demeanor completely gone. One of the few people he talked to before he went missing around midnight was you, Jeremy. Have any idea where he could have gone? Jeremy stares ahead of me blankly, 
There's a certain warmth that Jenna possesses to her gaze that her brother completely lacks in. I look at Jeremy now, and all I can see are all the times he threatened me over stuff I didn't do, called me a, and hit me. Yeah, yet there's definitely something different in his demeanor than I remember. He's less intense. Schizo, Schizo, I'd tell you if I knew. I just hooked up with, just hooked him up yesterday, like a quarter mile from his house. Ever since he crashed his ride, he makes me come out there to him when he wants to buy. So he didn't mention anything about running off. Heh. <laughs> I can't see Carl running. Why the hell would he want would he want to do that when he's got everything he'd ever want in that castle? The castle. Which is why it's worrying that he isn't there. Did it look like somebody broke in? No. Oh. You didn't give him anything laced, did you? I don't really know how all that works. No, it's the same stuff I smoke. Not nah, that's not that reassuring, but a nod regardless. Well, uh Thanks. We're staying at Carl's if you hear anything, or see him around somewhere. Jeremy frowns, canting his head to the side. We? Oui. Is Jenna with you? Yeah. Jeremy's frown deepens, but he doesn't look exactly angry or anything. Oh. There's a pause of silence, punctuated by a choked sob from Heather behind the house. How's she doing? The usual. Better than everyone else. Jeremy's frown shifts to a lopsided smile. The fox even grinning for a second. One of his front teeth is chipped in half. Heh, <laughs> sounds about right. Mika looks over his shoulder. Gonna get that joint now. He, si he sidesteps, grunting as he passes. Nice so Really? You've got a glass house there, stone thrower. I've got a lot of stones, now fuck off. Who the hell is this neon sign fuck me of a bat to treat me like this? I liked him better when he was just a tiny annoying klepto. But I liked him even more when he's on the back of a milk carton. Jeremy watches Mika for a moment before scratching his gut. His eyes are upon me now. Yeah, um, you should go now? Of course, gladly. I look around at my surroundings. I let Jenna know you're doing just great here. Eat hey, shit, don't come back. Jeremy just stares at me until I begin to walk away, then goes back to Heather. She's still crying. I didn't go well. <laughs> Thursday. It's like sands through the hourglass, so past the days of our lives. Oh, fuck me. What the hell? Hey. Who the fuck is this? So you are leaving? Running off to fuck some other wolf? It's a joke. Calm down. We were just trying to have some fun. I was staring, starting to realize that this probably wasn't the best time, but... So you're playing this stupid game of keeping me guessing whether or not you're going to ditch me by next year. And then you pull this shit. Outside. The hell is wrong with you? Me? You know, I told her that there was no other way in hell you'd fall for this since you already know since you already knew how I felt about you. I'm the one that should be fucking offended that you'd think that. That's not fair. You wanted a reaction from me and you got one. Happy? What's wrong? This was your idea. The phone clenched in the hand disappears. It's a prank. Making me think I just lost my otter is a prank? If this is a fucking joke, then you need to learn how to make one first. Why don't you learn how to take one? How was I supposed to take that? Just laugh and shrug and say, Well, fuck, so much for that. Is that what you expected? Oh, yeah, this is that prank that they were talking about. Okay. Actually, just thought you wouldn't fall for it. At least, not this hard. I mean, come on, I cropped that from the cover to some, some teen magazine. It was my number, too, if you didn't notice. It's... It just wasn't a good time, alright? No? No. What the hell are you doing here, anyway? Semester ended last week. So you're staying at home for the summer? Of course not. I'm staying with Emily. You need to calm down, Leo. How can we ever have fun if you're exploding all the time? Telling me to calm down is the worst thing you can do right now. I'm tired, I'm hot, and I just wanted to have lunch with him. You're overreacting. Fuck!
I'm going to Pueblo, Leo. Jesus. Man, this is so much different than the original playthrough. I stared through the grainy darkness. The motel room air is dry and stuffy. The air conditioner must be off. I look over. TJ is next to me in bed. He's curled up in a fetal-like position, his knees raised and his tail between his legs. TJ doesn't usually sleep like that. Leo lays in the bed across from us. He's laying on his back, his form perfectly still. There are no covers on him, and he's still in his jeans from yesterday. Neither of them are snoring or even audibly breathing, for that matter. It takes me a moment, but I, can actu but I can't actually tell if Leo's eyes are closed or not. Jesus, that's creepy as hell, man. All right, guys, thank you. That has been a new episode of uh, Echo Jenna's Path. This is getting really fucking creepy. We got to meet Jenna's brother and a bat named Mika. They're not particularly nice. Well, I mean, Jeremy's okay, I guess. Uh, he's just responding to, uh... He's just responding to Chase's snark. <laughs> but anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this creepy-ass video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!